Hello everyone, I'm Anton64. I'm the Flameflow. And I'm Richie. And welcome to the Hellfire Comms playthrough of Sonic Pocket Adventure for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, a console I've never owned and never played mm -hmm. a single game on until now. Pocket Adventure was developed by SNK. Yes, that SNK, the fighting game company. And it's a very interesting game. It cribs a lot from uh, the Genesis slash Mega Drive tiles. As you can see here, it's quite a nice looking game. The colours pop very well. And uh, if you keep your ears out, maybe go listen to a version without commentary, that'll be a lot easier. You will hear some very familiar tracks in addition to familiar visuals. Well, this is the one that might not be a familiar track to a lot of people, because this is actually a remix of the Sonic World theme from Sonic Jam on the Saturn, yeah. which is probably the most obscure pick on this soundtrack, maybe next to the Sonic 3 multiplayer songs that get reused later. But yes, pretty much the general idea of what's going on with Pocket Adventure is that it has like full-on my original level do not steal interpretations <laughs> of levels from the Mega Drive ones, with sometimes mismatched level themes from those games as well. It's basically a handheld alternative to the Mega Drive ones. I feel like that's what they were kind of going for with the design philosophy of this game. Mm. And you see that going into the special stage here with the Nox Sonic 2 special stage, which somehow seems to go on for much longer than the Sonic 2 halfpipes. Oh. Like with the Flicky's Island playthrough, I am just going through special stages 1 and 7 in this playthrough because before I cut those out, they, the special stages made up about a quarter of the game's runtime. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I gotta say, I don't like these. The uh, hit detection is wonky. It's way too easy to just go arse over tit into bombs that they pop around each corner. And th this is the reason I ended up giving it a, a 7 out of 10 on my um, media thread, which is funny because unlike 3D Blast, which got negative reviews. This one was actually very favourably reviewed. IGN gave it a 10 out of 10 for God's sake. Bloody hell. But to be fair, if you look at the context of when this came out, this was a handheld game that is basically on par quality-wise as the like the main series 2D Sonic games. Oh yeah. Compared to like before this where you had the Game Gear games that like, they were interesting, and I do still like some of those games, but let's be real here, the frame rate wasn't particularly kind to them, and just the general slowed down level design wasn't necessarily quite as rewarding as the Mega Drive ones. Yeah. So, like, yeah, having a console quality game on a handheld system, that was kind of a big deal, and, like, when the reviewers were looking at it through that lens, like, yeah, I'm not surprised it's got good reviews. I think a lot of my frustration just came from having to redo those special stages over and over and over, so if you're playing this casually, you would probably enjoy it a lot more. I would probably have enjoyed it a lot more. I probably would have at least gotten an 8 from me, and, uh, you know, maybe I'll have to do a second playthrough at a some point, but uh, I forgot where I was going from this. Oh yes, that's the point I was trying to bring up. Members of SNK would eventually go on to create a very familiar company to Sonic fans and uh, Sonic gamers alike. Yes, those are not the same things. There is a crossover sometimes. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> I meant to say developers. Shut up. And uh, that company would be Dimps, them of bottomless pits and whatnot fame. Ah. I would talk about like the being the genesis of game handheld games to come, but this one actually really doesn't show that many dimpsy traits. So like, you know, it the bigger like point of contention with the gameplay in this one is more the screen aspect ratio. It's like a lot of the time when people talk about screen crunching games, they think of like a vertical crunch where like things can shoot at you from above. Yes. This one, I would say it's more of a horizontal crunch in the fact that because it's more of a square shape aspect ratio, you don't have quite as much time to see what's coming. And just looking at the footage here, sometimes, especially when I'm making a jump, it does feel a little bit unsettling like there's it feels like there's supposed to be more of the screen that i'm just not seeing for some reason yeah no i get that because it i suppose it's the same issue that would have been with was it sonic genesis which was the like the gba port oh. of the, like the original sonic which had sort of 
it's a similar issue of sort of having that, like, horizontal screen crunch of not being able to see enough. This seems better in the sense of things aren't coming at you quite as fast. No, not at all. But I still see, so obviously, where the problem is. Well, with Sonic Genesis on the Game Boy Advance, I would still say that the vertical crunch there was more offensive than the horizontal one, because for that one, they did just zoom in the screen of like the Mega Drive games. So what would happen is that in some cases it made the game easier. Like there's certain bosses that you didn't have to actually engage with. You could just jump at them from the ground and hit them, which is fun. But there are also other parts where like if there's an enemy just slightly off screen, you're going to make a jump like on a platforming section and you're probably going to get twatted when you wouldn't before but like th this game's bigger problem when it comes to the crunch is more that this game it's i don't know how best to describe it but it feels like when you jump it carries itself more like you have less control of the jump after you've committed to it right. than you would in like say mega drive sonic and so like for the most part the game kind of bears that in mind there's not too many places where it can flat out kill you until you get to like some of the really later levels but it's still something that takes a bit of getting used to as you play through the game yeah otherwise i felt the control was pretty tight like the level design at least until the much later stages was fair for the most part again you know trying to go an entire stage without taking a hit so i could keep my 50 rings notwithstanding and otherwise it was a fun time as I said earlier, you may have heard some familiar music already, the first act of uh, Secret Plant used Angel Island Act 1, and now we're using... Uh, Say it. Hydro City Act 2. Hey, he said it. Okay, it was Act 2 for both. My mistake. Like I said earlier, they do sort of mix and match things, and... I will say one decision that I really do not understand about this is this is obviously Chemical Plant. It's not trying to be like a different kind of chemical base level like say Secret Base Force or something like that. Like no, this is literally just the visuals from Chemical Plant. But they've come up with new names from anyway. This is Secret Plant. Yeah. Even though it's not particularly secret. <laughs> nah, no, we just waltz right in, didn't even need to show any ID. Going back to what you said about like doing a casual run versus trying to get all the emeralds and that, the way you get the emeralds is that the particular emerald you can get is assigned to the particular level. It's not like you just get them in order and it don't matter which ones you do. Like If you go to the special stage in Secret Plant, you will get the designated Secret Plant Chaos Emerald right. and the designated Secret Plant Special Stage. That sounds like it'd be really annoying, but that is kind of balanced out by the fact that this game does have a save feature, and you can, once you beat the game, you can just jump back to the particular level. So it's much less of an annoyance if you do miss special stages. Like, you don't screw yourself out of getting the good ending in this game. So, like, you know, you don't have to worry about that as much oh. compared to, like, the Mega Drive games, like, pre Free and Knuckles, because Free and Knuckles had a safe feature as well. But, like, that, that was when you had a very big distinction between you were either doing a good ending run or a bad ending run. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Cosmic Casino here. The Gumball music from uh, the bonus stage in Sonic 3 is uh, playing in Act 1 here. In Act 2, it's the slot machine from uh, Sonic and Knuckles. Ooh. Yes, the bonus stage is that I mostly remember for, oh fuck, I didn't mean to jump into that. Let's kill a bit of time. <laughs> bless, bless. And just to cover all our bases, the music for Act 1, like Flame said, remix of Sonic World's music from Sonic Jam. Act 2 is a remix of Angel Island Zone Act 1. And the massive vertical loop in Act 2 bears a striking resemblance to 3DS bloops in Palm Tree Panic from CD. So we're really taken from loads of different uh, sources here. This is the postmodern remix culture before that term was probably coined. <laughs> I too enjoy gambling. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's just fictional gambling here though, it didn't get ahead of the curve until much later. <laughs> oh, Sonic responsibly, y'all. <laughs> I don't know how to Sonic responsibly. No, <laughs> like, It's a problem. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. So Richie, is it safe to assume, and god let me be right for once, that you haven't played this? 
No, Tom, you're, you're, you're completely incorrect. Of course I've played this game. No, you, you are totally right. I've never I, I've never seen this before in my life. I, I've never even touched a Neo Geo pocket colour. Exactly. <laughs> it was one of those systems. Like, after the success of the Game Boy, there were a lot of other companies who wanted to try their hand at making handheld systems. Yes. There were some that were okay. Like, the Game Gear, for it, all its battery swallowing problems it did have some decent games for it but then you had other things like you had the neo geo pocket and this neo geo pocket color you had the wonder swan which i've i've got a bit of a soft spot to the mega man and base game that came out in japan on that but still like the system was not worth putting a hit on gunpei yuku for <laughs> jesus fucking christ <laughs> like but you know it's Nintendo held firm in the handheld market right up until they kind of just blended it with consoles with a Switch. Like, there was a period of time where, like, Sony were sort of half-heartedly putting in an effort, but, yeah. like, no, nothing really took off outside of Nintendo handhelds, unfortunately. Talk about the Vita being the most ironically named fucking handheld to ever exist. All right, what we got here? Aquatic Relics Zone. Do, 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 do. Uh, Act 1 is Mushroom Hill Zone from uh, Sonic and Knuckles, and uh, Act Two is Hydro City. <laughs> Act One from Sonic Three. Shut the fuck up. Look, okay. If I get a dub, I'm gonna milk it for as long as I can. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, these yellow things. I did not actually know what these were playing for the game, but apparently they're photo cards. They're jigsaw pieces. One of the things that this game has as like a bonus feature is there are. He's, there are pictures that you can fill out in the menu mm -hmm. and you get the pieces for that through the levels so right. it's not something that i have ever considered bothering but like again if you think about it in the context where it came out it's a fair a game with a fairly short runtime that people are going to be playing portably you might want to get a bit more mileage out of it so like i definitely understand the appeal of bonus features like that at this point in time uh, it says here in the wiki, by finishing three puzzles, which is 48 photo pieces, you unlock the sound test, and by completing all six puzzles, which is 96 photo pieces, you unlock a special stage option where the special stages can be played in order. Now, if you beat the game normally, that is without all the Chaos Emeralds, you do get the uh, stage select by default, so it is quite easy to go back and redo stuff. Lord knows I had to do it for a certain stage, because I didn't even realise you could get to the special stage from that one, but uh, otherwise, um, you know, retakes of the zones aside, it wasn't that hard to complete. Yeah, it's not that difficult overall. I've already talked about the only real problem with the control and screen crunch and that, but here we have Knuckles! The Flames of Disaster! We have Knuckles in a very adventure-looking design. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He, he's not magenta here, he's red. Yeah, and he's got his proportions are more akin to how he looked in adventure as well, because this game came out of a period of time that was like the transitional phase mm -hmm. between like oh, the no. classic designs and the modern designs. And yeah, this game in itself isn't particularly consistent with that either. Like Sonic, you can see this is very clearly a classic Sonic sprite from his spines and that. Uh-huh. And he looks kind of jarring next to modern Knuckles. Also, he has green eyes, so it's kind of like the transitional phase. He's half ruined forever. <laughs> Take the bait. <laughs> Not taking the bait. Should, should we get out of here, Knuckles? Ro rocks? Oh, okay, you're just going to punch me. Yeah, their friendship was still a work in progress there. That, that sprite there, it looked like he'd taken a proper beat into the chin or some shit there. Yeah, that was timed perfectly. If Tails was even a slight bit slower, Sonic would have been skewered by the rotors of the tornado. Oh, yeah. the, the, the horror, the horror of it all. It has the same problems as Sonic 2 Sky Chase. This is the one that they didn't bother coming up with a new name for, and I, I get it, I wouldn't bother putting energy into this either. This zone's music is quite interesting because it's from one of the multiplayer stages in Sonic 3's two-player mode, Azure Lake. Yeah, they they did get a bit of mileage out of this, and we're going to see some more of those themes later in the game as well. Mm -hmm. I think I prefer the more like laid-back tone from Sonic 2's Sky Chase theme, and I kind of think something would have 
something akin to that would have worked better here. But I think that is because in Sonic 2, that's, the music is kind of the saving grace for Sky Chase for me. It's like a level that I wouldn't be that keen on. Uh. But with that music, it kind of just acts as a mediator in tone. You know, like it's a bit of a breather before you get to like the actual genuinely challenging parts of Sonic 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the stages here are no less potent, let me tell you what. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It does have its moments, yeah. Now, the stage I was talking about where I missed out on the Chaos Emerald was, in fact, this one, because why would you ever assume that there is going to be a special stage ring at the end of this auto-scroller? Although, by the same token, there has been a distinct trend going of, like, the Act 1 of every level so far has had a special stage ring. I know. It's different, so it throws you off, but also I can see why they thought to just stick it here too. You know, it's still following their own pattern they set up. It is technically Act 1 of Aero Base Zone, which we'll be getting to next. Yeah, and it works similar to Sonic 2 again, how Sky Chose was the Act 1 of Wing Fortress. So, again, you know, they're playing to what they have. Oh, drivers into the ring, Tails! Oh, I wanted to do like in Sonic Advance, whatever game that was. I think it was 3 that brought the plane in, but Sonic, the Sonic Advance trilogy are the games where you download a save file. <laughs> Let's be real here. Those, those games, the special stages, are like accessing the special stages to be precise. They're the annoying parts of those games. Very much so. I don't even need to look up the music for this one. I can tell you that this is uh, Death Egg's music. Yes, Death Egg Act 1 from Freer Knuckles in particular. Because, like, Death Egg, you do have to clarify it, and I will also stand by the fact that Sonic 2 Death Egg is not as bad as people say. Look, if they had just had free rings, just give me free rings and tell me how you're doing, then I'd be fine. But since you get no rings, and you have limited lives and limited continues, I think it's artificial difficulty. I, I will meet in the middle there and say that, like... Have, you have either a life system or a, you know, you need to perfect run it level. But I feel like in general, as a final boss, and especially now on Origins where you do have basically infinite lives, it's fine. You know, like, you, you just need to get good. Like, like, both of those bosses have patterns. You can learn the pattern. Again, get good. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to try and do that while I deal with the hitbox of the friggin' thing. Thank you. It's not that bad. You can, like, if you're trying to be clever with it, yes, I get it. It does make it difficult. But, like, there is a safe pattern you can do as well. Okay, well, the, I hope you discovered the safe pattern to get out of the way of my scorn, because it's coming. Tough shit. We already have a Sonic 2 OP on the channel where I did it, no problem. No! <laughs> <laughs> so, Rishi, how have you enjoyed the pocket adventure thus far? I mean, I think, like, just watching it, it's just like, it's cute, it's like, it's a nice, small, little Sonic game, and honestly, that, it, that, that's fine by me. Okay. Really, there, there's n nothing really else that I can say. Like, it seems pretty decently put together, um, much more so than some of the other um, early portable Sonic titles. It's okay, you can say Labyrinth. Yeah. And... Yeah, it just seems very competent and very adequate. Like, really, actually even better than adequate. Like, actually good. Oh, wow. High praise coming from Richie. Tom, you, you give Labyrinth as the example, but I'm not going to pretend that Sonic 2 for the Game Gear was great either, let's be <laughs> honest there. I was trying to deflect from 3D Blast, to be honest, but yeah, you're absolutely right there. 2 on the Game Gear slash Master System is very rough. 3D Blast, obviously, we just covered. That's a console game, but, like, that that's what it is. But, like, the other one that gets a bit... gets people a bit irate is Sonic Blast, the Game Gear game, mm. which I think that one gets more criticism for the fact that it looks like a fucking, like, knockoff bootleg game than the actual gameplay itself. It's all right until you get to Silver Castle. Oh, Blue Marine, I'll say. Blue Marine is the tipping point. Fair enough. Speaking of the Sonic 2 final bosses... <laughs> yeah, hello, Silver Sonic. You sure get around, my friend, and what we're hearing now is the Doomsday Zone theme. 
We is odd because this game has a Doomsday XP, but we won't be hearing it there. <laughs> Do you think we'll see multiple Metal Sonics in the cinematic universe? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like the thing with Metal Sonic is that, like, if they're gonna make variations of him, they'd probably all need some kind of like separate characterization for them which would all need time dedicated to developing them whereas if you just have like the metal sonic that we know from cd then that one like they did it fine in the ova they can do it fine here you know if jim carrey says go and kill sonic my hyper metal sonic i will fucking shit live in the cinema Look, I want a throwback to the strange, isn't it, line. That's all I'm really asking for when it eventually happens. Unusual, doesn't it seem? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, I think what's potentially more likely as an option, and this is just me spitballing as an idea of what might be fun, is you sort of take some of those variations on Metal Sonic and you have them as kind of like prototypes yes, yeah. that get worked through before you eventually end up with Metal Sonic. Yeah. Um, and obviously you have the sort of artificial intelligence inhabits all of them, so you sort of still have that through fair of the villain being part of the story, but you get the sort of the different visual references throughout. I could see him doing like maybe a heroes kind of thing where Metal Sonic goes rogue and he could have like his own fleet of Metal Sonic like XPs or yes. even just like if they were to roll in like you know Shadow's whole am I an android thing like you could maybe rework that a bit and it'd probably be more effective for Metal Sonic let's be honest there. Or we could crib <laughs> off FTC and do the Brotherhood of Metallics yes please and thank you. Uh, that, that's a bit of a blind spot for me, but yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. We are in a post Sonic the Hedgehog 3 trailer timeline, by the way, just in case you're wondering why we're discussing it so much. And God, Shadow looks so fucking cool in the trailer. Does look pretty damn cool. He even had like an Akira shot with a bike, like, that's everything I could have wanted. <laughs> Upper fucking tower as well. Yeah, <laughs> like, whoever was directing that particular sequence, they know what I personally love about Shadow, so thank you. <laughs> the only thing that I'm kind of iffy on so far is there was no Wade Whipple in that trailer. Wade Heads, where is our representation? You had a whole fucking spin-off. <laughs> I think you'll be fine, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, the thing that made me the most gleeful was just hearing a stunning orchestral mix of Live and Learn throughout the trailer. I was just like, yes! I do kind of want to see what they do with Live and Learn in the final version, because, like... I mean, I'm terrified, but... <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, for the trailer, having the orchestral version of it works very well. Like, they get the melody that people know, and if if you have played Sonic Adventure 2, that just perks your ears up right away. But, like, if we have an actual confrontation where Sonic and Shadow team up, it, like, I, I need to hear Crush for you. I am Shadow! Shadow the Hedgehog! Please do what Sonic X deprived us of. Well... At least in the West, and the uh, <laughs> in his home country got it right. <laughs> like you say, home country as though anything involved in the production of Sonic Eggs was actually produced in the house. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. God, like the more you look into that, it's like it's it's normal practice in general for animation to like outsource mid frames and stuff. Like that's fine in itself. The problem is that because with Sonic X it clearly had some kind of trouble with production. It felt like they were using a different studio to animate every fucking episode, so that's why the art style is so inconsistent and all over the place. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, uh, come to think of it, Tom, you'd know a lot about that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> this special stage really put my nuts in a vice, by the way. This is quite aggressive for the spike balls, as you can see here, and the draw distance for said spike balls not being too great really doesn't help its case at all. <laughs> no. I use save states. I think you'll be, uh, well, not interested to know, but at least you know it. I did not use any here. You didn't see me load the menu at all here, did you? Mm. Gonna go over this with a fine tooth comb when it comes to editing. Fine, the tells literally aren't there, but yeah, I did save scum my the fuck through that special stage there. 
No! Oh, I was just going to compliment you on your coat. Jesus. This is exactly like the finale of Sonic the Comic, where Eggman goes from his old design to, like, the uh, adventure one by putting on the coat, and that's literally it. Oh, that is cool, yeah. Like, that was where I was thinking of, like, there is an inconsistency in the art style with Eggman in particular here. But if this game is trying to be, like, the bridge game, that's actually kind of cool. I I'm pretty sure it's not canon, though, because it didn't appear in the uh, encyclopedia or anything. Everything is canon, Tom. Yes, everything is canon. What about the popcorn machine, huh? Where does that take place? It got a nod in Studiopolis in Mania. It's canon. Uh, of all the examples I could have picked, I picked the literal worst one. <laughs> yeah, it's like... You could have come up with, like... Is the Pakistani McDonald's toy canon? And I would have said yes, but I would have had to really dig deep to prove it. But, you Shadow know. Basketball! <laughs> It's the Rouge model that gets me with that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they tried. They, they were probably told, like, oh, she's a bat with white fur, and that was literally the extent of the reference material. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, here we go. Oh, just thinking about stuff. Oh, shit, Sonic! I should be used to him just showing up by now, but apparently that caught me by surprise. Oh, this is a tricky one, this boss. See, he fires a thing. That's hard. Ooh. <laughs> Don't patronise me, Richie. <laughs> to be fair, depending where he is on the screen, it can be awkward dodging both the projectiles and the fallout from the bombs he's dropping. I can see how. Yeah, so, like, if you're just tanking hits, it's not the end of the world. But, like, for the sake of an LP, I obviously didn't want to do that. So, like, I've tried to play it careful here. Mm, and obviously... Your rings can fly off screen, so you can very easily find yourself with zero. That's the genesis for something that we would become very familiar with in Dimps games. Uh -huh. <laughs> they love doing that. People talk about how difficult the finale of Sonic 4 Episode 1 is, and like, I think the ring scattering is the part that makes it so absurdly difficult. Oh, of course. Mm. Because, like... The boss in particular, it has a lot of, like, trial and error, learning what he's going to do at each phase. And that in itself isn't a problem. It makes it quite an interesting boss on its own. But when you only have, like, realistically two opportunities to take damage before your rings just can't be salvaged, that, you know, it makes it a lot more difficult than it probably needs to be. Yeah. Can I say, the explosion effect on that bomb is beautiful. It is really well animated, yeah, for this kind of game. Uh, well, the sprite work in Pocket Adventure is really nice. It is, like, I know they did use some, like, complex layering effects here, like, I'm pretty sure it's this game, that for Sonic Sprite in particular, they're using more colours in Sonic Sprite than realistically they should be able to use, and the way they pulled that off is Sonic doesn't have one sprite, he has two sprites that are laid over the top of each other uh -huh. and so that's how they get the like modern green eyes design pulled off in this kind of very limited color palette oh it's the last utopia nothing will be good after this well <laughs> some of the later dimps games are pretty cool but yes just to kind of clarify i think earlier on in the playthrough i mentioned that we were showing special stage one and seven i meant one and six here because this is where the seventh Chaos Emerald is. You have to knock it out of his mech here. Ah. You might not necessarily realise you need to do this because you can accidentally kill him early if you're hitting, if you get more hits in on him than you do the Emerald. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're playing this. Yeah, I'm too busy jamming out to uh, the big arms for him, mate. Oh, fuck! He's got it! Oh no, he has all seven now. What do I do? Oh boy, am I red in the face. I'm just gonna skedaddle. See ya! I gotta get the fuck out of here! That's a lie. Sonic did not got through final. I love grammar. <laughs> oh, thank God I had this prepared. This boss coming up here, like, it has the Sky Sanctuary music, which it isn't one of the 
level themes I would have gone with as a peak, but it actually kind of works. But as for the actual gameplay itself here, if you've ever played Sonic Advance 2, you might recognise what's going on here, because it is functionally the same boss. Yeah, and Sonic Rush as well. Sonic Rush at least had like the, you know, it had the gimmick of like you switch between Sonic and Blaze and they had their own different kind of things they were trying to fire back. But this, like, you look at Sonic Advance 2's final boss again and it is literally just the exact same strategy here. He phases up and down and you just fire his projectiles back at him. Wow. <laughs> Super Sonic did not give a fuck there. Nope. Brutal. It's much easier than the Advance 2 one, I'll say that much. They're more generous with rings for a start. <laughs> oh yeah. I did my time, okay? I remember. Right, just slowly coming down there. It's a Sonic outro, it, he does this. Where's the music? Where's the... Da -da -da? Da -da 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 they didn't want to pay Masai Nakamura for that. <laughs> That's fair. Go, my Chaos Emeralds, and revive everything. That bunny, he was dead until now, that butterfly. <laughs> he was made of stone, now he's living. Th this is my payment. So, yeah, I guess final thoughts on Pocket Adventure, Tom. It is a neat, ambitious little game. The special stages kind of annoy me, especially the later ones. But, putting aside my biases, this is a worthwhile game. I can't recommend it over the original Mega Drive trilogy, hmm. but it is definitely worth a play. It's an interesting piece of Sonic's history. Though it may be non-canonical, you should make it canonical in your heart. Richie? Uh, it seems cute. That, that's about all I can say, really. <laughs> you have contributed so much in these two playthroughs, mate, but then again, I coasted in Super Mario 64 a lot, so that's fine. Flame? I like what this game does. I think it... Like, maybe it's not one that every Sonic fan needs to play, because, oh, yeah. like, nowadays you're going to deviate more towards the Mega Drive games than this. But if you do enjoy Sonic, if you do enjoy 2D Sonic and those Mega Drive games, this one's still well worth checking out, I would say. I, I think it's pretty. I like the music rearrangements. The gameplay is perfectly serviceable for it is. Like, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it controls well. It looks well. Again, you can go back to any stage you want after you beat the game, so getting those, you know, emeralds again isn't really as much of a ball like as I make it out to be. And it's just a fun time overall, so we here at HFC recommend Sonic Pocket Adventure. I've been EdTom64. I've been the Flamethrower. And I've been Richie. And thank you guys. Thank you so much for your playing and for your watching.